What up everyone, Martina here and today we're making a magical glowing fountain. Before we get into today's project, I want to quickly thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a website with all kinds of different courses where you can learn and grow as a creator, artist or even a business person. Check out the link below because if you're one of the first 100 to sign up, you'll get two months for free. Now let's get started. First of all, I went to Thingiverse and if you haven't heard of it, it's this website where you can find all kinds of 3D models and also post your own. Anyway, I'll leave a link to the ones I use down below. For a while I've wanted to use this transparent PLA in the project because it's possible to light that up and it's just a perfect balance between too transparent and too opaque. And because it takes some time to 3D print stuff, I started that so I could continue on with the rest of the project while that printed. The 3D printer I used in this project is the Creality CR10, which is a relatively cheap printer, but the quality of the prints turns out pretty good every time and for a DIYer that's more than enough. About a year ago we made this styro slicer, mainly for the mini fridge I made, and I also had a lot of leftover styrofoam from that project that I could use to make this fountain. I spent quite some time figuring out a design and I asked you guys on Patreon what seems like ages ago about which design I should choose and the first one of these drawings got the most votes, so I've based my final sketch on that one. After finally landing on a design, I could figure out what each layer had to look like, and then cut the styrofoam layers with this slicer. You can of course use any type of hot wire styrofoam slicers out there, and if you want to DIY a tool like that, there are tons of easier ways to do it than this one. I tried to incorporate some small caves and deep lakes, which of course I had to account for when cutting out all the layers. Now I have all the layers I need, I just have to glue them together and you just gotta be a bit careful when you choose the type of glue to glue them together because a lot of types can make the styrofoam melt and you don't want that. I read online that you can use spray glue to attach them and I tried it out earlier, it seemed to work fine, so that's what I'm gonna do. I only glued the bottom three layers together at first and this was because I wanted to be able to access the pump and the wires at any time if something were to go wrong and therefore I need a backlid that would be detachable. It was super easy to cut out the lid that would blend in after gluing those bottom layers together. To give the styrofoam a more rock-like texture I used acetone to melt it. It sounds kind of strange, but it creates more natural looking surfaces and this way I could also make the lakes as deep as I wanted them. Remember to ensure good ventilation and use a respirator while doing this because you don't want to breathe in those fumes. Also, it's really satisfying in a strange way to watch it melt away like that. So before gluing these layers together, I drilled the holes for the tubing that would pump the water from the bottom to the top because that will be difficult to do later. As you can see, it will be fairly easy to slide the back lid in and out once everything is glued together. The next step is where we'll really start to see the rock texture. So I ordered this foam coat from a website called the Hotwire Foam Factory and it arrived surprisingly fast considering it was shipped from the US to Norway, although it was opened in customs clearance. Wonder why they would open a bag of white powder? Anyway, it's super easy to mix three parts powder to one part water. It's got a consistency similar to concrete and I just grabbed a paintbrush and started to cover the whole thing with it. This coat will give it a nice stone or rock-like texture, as well as add some weight to it. The exterior foam coat is completely dry now, and I think it's a good idea to just poke the holes for all the wires and everything before I continue. And I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to do that, because I don't have anything else to make those holes. 
To make it easier to lead the wires through to the crystals, I decided to push some tubing through all the holes that I'd made. Turns out that this made everything a lot smoother and simpler later on. It was quite easy to do too, as I just used a really long paintbrush to lead it through, removed it and cut it to size. And of course, fixing it in place with the obligatory DIY tool, the hot glue gun. I couldn't simply poke a hole straight through for the crystals at the front of the fountain, so what I had to do was poke a hole that went straight down, and then make a shaft along the edge of the fountain on the underside with another inlaid tube. Finally, I could do a test run. And it didn't go too well because there was a huge leakage somewhere. But that was easily fixed because I just added another layer of foam coat wherever the water would be. Finally, it's dry and I could go on to what I thought was the most fun, which was painting. Alright, so I've never tried to paint anything that would even look remotely like stone, so it was a first for me in many ways. I started with a pure black coating to really make all the little nooks and crannies nice and dark. As I understand it, you're supposed to build up the rock color and texture by using layers upon layers, which is what I attempted. I covered the black with a medium to light grey using acrylic paint. When that had dried, I made a brown color wash, which is just a little bit of paint mixed with a lot of water. And then I went over the whole fountain again. It looks kinda terrible at this point, but it will get better, I promise. Wherever I planned on adding moss later on, I dabbed those areas with brown and green to try to imitate dirt. Then I went over the whole thing with a darker grey to cover up some of that brown, another round with a darker brown to create more depth, and the grey again. It was really just going back and forth until I was satisfied with how it looked. Now, with the base color in place, I started to add highlights. I wanted a kind of dramatic look, so the highlights are quite sharp and contrasting to the rest. I also decided to add some dark blue at the bottom of the legs because I think that will make the legs look way deeper than they are when it's covered up with water. When I felt like I was done with the painting, I took it outside to clear coat it. As I said, I'm completely new to this kind of miniature landscape painting, but it was incredibly fun, so if you have any tips for improvement, I really welcome your comments. To really make sure that everything will be waterproof over time, I completely cover the lake floors with transparent silicone, and preferably get something that's aquarium grade. I simply put on a plastic glove and dabbed it on with my finger for the most part, but I had to use a paintbrush where I couldn't reach with my hands. I'm just adding this stuff everywhere that will be in touch with water constantly. Time to deal with the electronics. I used these X-shaped RGB wire junctions to, as easily as possible, solder all the LEDs together to one LED controller. I started by clipping an RGB cable to one junction, connected that to an LED controller and fixed them in place with some shrink tube. As I needed 6 LED outputs, I soldered 2 more X junctions to this and protected that with heat shrink as well. Now this is what we end up with. I put that aside for a second to deal with the vacuum pump. I soldered 2 wires to it and again protected it with heat shrink. I decided to attach the pump by hanging it from 2 pieces of steel wire to reduce vibrations caused by the pump as well as the sound. At this point, the only RGB LED strip I had was a waterproof version, so that's what I'll use, but ideally, you'll just have a regular RGB LED strip. 
It wasn't really an issue to me though as I just peeled off the silicone protection. I cut the 6 lengths I needed, soldered on a length of RGB wire to each of them and protected it with heat shrink. Now we have 6 of these. Because of the tube shafts we made earlier, it was super easy to insert all the LEDs and fix them in place with hot glue. Then I simply had to solder those wires to the RGB junctions on the controller and connect that and the pump to the 12 volt power input. You can find all the materials and all the details in the description. I did another test run and now you can actually hear what it sounds like when it's running. Lastly, I cut out the circle from this birch wood to use as a base for the fountain. While I let the oil dry, I finally glued on those 3D printed crystals. Now just a final touch, the moss. And with that, we are done. I want to thank our patrons for supporting our channel. We really appreciate you a lot. At the beginning of this project, I wanted to learn to create my own organic 3D models, so I turned to Skillshare to find some relevant courses. I found this awesome course that teaches you to use Blender, which is a completely free to use 3D modeling program. It was an awesome guide, easy to follow, and I really learned a lot. I even managed to go from modeling to actually printing the design I had made, which was incredibly cool. I also use tutorials on this site for my other hobbies, especially drawing and painting. So if you're dreaming of making your hobbies your job or simply improving your skills in anything from video to design or Arduino programming, this is a great place to start. Premium memberships start at around 10 bucks a month, but for the first 100 who signs up with the link in the description, the first two months will be absolutely free. These bots go away quite fast, so make sure to be one of those 100. Thank you all so much for watching and please let me know what you thought of this project in the comments or what you'd like to see us make in the future. See you in the next one!